us now. Whatever the difficulties, Africa shall be at peace. However improbable it may sound to the skeptics, Africa will prosper. More than anything, UNISA must be celebrated as a pioneer of the distance education model, an enduring gift not only to South Africa, the continent, but to the human civilization in the knowledge arena the world over. Education is the light in a dark room. It's the spark of a dream. A passport to the future. And the seed of generational change. Through education, we reflect on yesterday and define tomorrow. Rooted in South Africa and the African continent, UNISA can truly claim to be the African university in the service of humanity. UNISA stands at the pinnacle of education through open distance e-learning, with a footprint of students in more than a hundred countries worldwide. Since the founding of the university in 1873 as an examining body, we have been a trailblazer. UNISA is the first and only institution in South Africa to carry our country's name with pride and the first public university in the world to exclusively teach by means of distance education, an ever-changing dynamic university with a global reach. UNISA's history spans the entire modern history of South Africa, opening up a world of academic study opportunities for former activists and struggle heroes, thought leaders, business people, legal experts, acclaimed entertainers, and sports stars. The university takes pride in almost 1 million alumni, with 10 alumni chapters internationally making their mark in diverse fields and capabilities. Some of the noteworthy alumni include President Nelson Mandela, Tabumbeki, who is also the Chancellor and custodian of the university's Calabash Awards, current President Cyril Ramaphosa, former South African Reserve Bank Governor Joe Marcus and current one Lise Jahanyaho, internationally Reserve Bank Governors of Eswatini and Namibia, to name but a few. At UNISA, the World Wide Web is our educational playground, but we also have beautiful and impressive campuses. UNISA's Makalniak campus is located in the city of Tswane and is a major landmark of the capital city. The Florida campus in Johannesburg is UNISA's science campus, housing state-of-the-art infrastructure and laboratory equipment. UNISA has six regional hubs including Ethiopia and multiple centers across the country. We have embraced the fact that we need to adapt quickly to the fast-paced higher education environment of the 21st century and this is reflected in our management style and leadership practice. 
In articulating her vision, the new Principal and Vice-Chancellor of the University of South Africa, the first black woman to be appointed at the helm of UNISA, Professor Puleng Linkabola, shared that UNISA is well-placed to address society's most demanding challenges by using research to meaningfully transform the lives of those in our communities. To this end, UNISA is working on the following catalytic niche areas. Marine Studies As a discipline, Marine Studies covers field-specific studies like marine ecology and biology to policy-related studies like marine spatial planning and coastal economies. Many other areas of marine research and studies are covered in this niche area. Aviation and Aeronautical Studies Aviation and Aeronautical Studies covers specializations in areas as diverse as aeronautical engineering and aerospace safety and South Africa's 18 airports forms a major role player for passengers and goods transitioning to and from our country. This is a niche that supports a major component of the country's economy. Automotive Studies the South African automotive industry is projected to grow from 600,000 to 1.4 million vehicles a year in production. There is major potential to be explored in UNISA's commitment to automotive studies. In 2022, students from the Department of Mechanical Engineering participated in the Sassel Solar Challenge with their solar-powered car that travels from Johannesburg to Cape Town without using a single drop of fuel. Energy Studies UNISA's Institute for Development of Energy for African Sustainability specializes in designing chemical processes, reducing material and energy consumption, as well as carbon dioxide emissions. Space Studies and Square Kilometer Array UNISA has been extensively involved in the $1 billion Square Kilometer Array project since 2012. The UNISA Observatory, situated on the main campus, is a modern, well-equipped facility housing a 14-inch telescope where the College of Science, Engineering and Technology offers undergraduate courses in astrophysics and astronomy with specialization up to PhD level. Fourth Industrial Revolution and Digitalization the fourth industrial revolution can be described as the advent of cyber-physical systems involving entirely new capabilities for people and machines. Examples include genome editing and new forms of machine intelligence. The College of Graduate Studies will support and promote studies into 4IR and digitalization, while the Graduate School of Business Leadership presents a short learning program on big data. Natural Sciences the simplest definition of biotechnological studies is applied biology. Through the application of biological knowledge and techniques to develop products or services, the UNISA's College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences is one of the main partners in the African Biogenome Project, a coordinated pan-African effort piloting a project with the key objective of sequencing 100,000 endemic species. Health and or pharmaceutical studies the Department of Health Studies is prepared for the challenge of equipping their students with research skills and expertise in the field of health and pharmaceutical studies. The UNESCO UNISA Africa Chair in Nanoscience and Nanotechnology is leading the international research into the nano delivery of medicinal drugs, including African herbal medicine. The College of Law offers an elective undergraduate model on medical law. Feminist, Womanist, Busadi theorizations. In the College of Human Sciences, the Institute for Gender Studies, the College of Education and the Graduate School of Business all contribute to the interdisciplinary research into eliminating gender-based violence, homophobia and transphobia, and discrimination against women in the workplace and the political arena. The Institute also uses education about gender as an effective way to achieve gender equality and the empowerment of women. Student Support and Co-Curricular Activities UNISA is uniquely placed to offer creative and radically innovative ways of enhancing student support. UNISA's College of Graduate Studies has developed a whole range of training programs to assist and encourage students. The Advocacy and Resource Center for Students with Disabilities promotes the principle of access for success and the Student Development Division provides students with social support and leadership development services. 
These niche areas find expression in the rich tapestry of our disciplines included in the College of Accounting Sciences, Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, Economic and Management Sciences, Education, Graduate Studies, Human Sciences, Law, Science, Engineering and Technology, the Graduate School of Business Leadership and the Tabumbegi School of Public and International Affairs. As a comprehensive open distance e-learning institution, UNISA is recognized as a serious player in research globally. From publication and journal output to the number of masters and doctoral graduates, we are moving forwards and upwards. UNISA has made substantial progress in research and innovation, as evidenced by several external and credible scientific ranking systems. With the latest ones, the 2023 Weibo Metrics and Shanghai Rankings, placing us in the top 10 universities in the country. As Africa's leading open distance e-learning university, we can reflect with great pride on the past 150 years of transformational education and we are confident in our ability to succeed and become a truly high performance university as we define tomorrow. Whatever the setbacks of the moment, Nothing can stop us now. Whatever the difficulties, Africa shall be at peace. However improbable it may sound to the skeptics, Africa will prosper. More than anything, UNISA must be celebrated as a pioneer of the distance education model, an enduring gift not only to South Africa, the continent, but to the human civilization in the knowledge arena the world over. Education is the light in a dark room. It's the spark of a dream, a passport to the future, and the seed of generational change. Through education, we reflect on yesterday and define tomorrow. Rooted in South Africa and the African continent, UNISA can truly claim to be the African university in the service of humanity. UNISA stands at the pinnacle of education through open distance e-learning, with a footprint of students in more than a hundred countries worldwide. Since the founding of the university in 1873 as an examining body, we have been a trailblazer. UNISA is the first and only institution in South Africa to carry our country's name with pride and the first public university in the world to exclusively teach by means of distance education, an ever-changing dynamic university with a global reach. UNISA's history spans the entire modern history of South Africa, opening up a world of academic study opportunities for former activists and struggle heroes, thought leaders, business people, legal experts, acclaimed entertainers, and sports stars. The university takes pride in almost 1 million alumni, with 10 alumni chapters internationally making their mark in diverse fields and capabilities. Some of the noteworthy alumni include President Nelson Mandela, Tabumbeki, who is also the Chancellor and custodian of the university's Calabash Awards, current President Cyril Ramaphosa, former South African Reserve Bank Governor Jill Marcus and current one, Liseja Hangaho, internationally Reserve Bank Governors of Eswatini and Namibia, to name but a few. At UNISA, the World Wide Web is our educational playground, but we also have beautiful and impressive campuses. UNISA's Makalniak campus is located in the city of Tswane and is a major landmark of the capital city. The Florida campus in Johannesburg is UNISA's science campus, housing state-of-the-art infrastructure and laboratory equipment. UNISA has six regional hubs including Ethiopia and multiple centers across the country. 
We have embraced the fact that we need to adapt quickly to the fast-paced higher education environment of the 21st century, and this is reflected in our management style and leadership practice. In articulating her vision, the new principal and vice chancellor of the University of South Africa, the first black woman to be appointed at the helm of UNISA, Professor Puleng Linkabola, shared that UNISA is well placed to address society's most demanding challenges by using research to meaningfully transform the lives of those in our communities. To this end, UNISA is working on the following catalytic niche areas. Marine studies. As a discipline, Marine studies covers field-specific studies like marine ecology and biology to policy-related studies like marine spatial planning and coastal economies. Many other areas of marine research and studies are covered in this niche area. Aviation and Aeronautical Studies Aviation and By virtue of the powers vested in me as the principal and vice chancellor of the University of South Africa, I constitute this a gathering of a congregation of the University of South Africa. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to join us in silent prayers, meditations, and affirmations to give thanks to the achievements that we are celebrating tonight, the graduation of our loved ones. Let us be in silence. Thank you. May I request the procession and the audience to be seated. May you be seated. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. His Excellency Dr. Tabo Mbeki, the Chancellor of the University of South Africa and the former President of the Republic of South Africa. The Chairperson of Council Dr. Daniel Musia and members of council present and participating virtually. Our esteemed honorary guest, Mr. Pete Warren, recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Honoris Causa. Members of the executive and extended management of the University of South Africa present here this evening executive directors representing various departments, members of the academic procession, academicians of the University of South Africa who are the center of the knowledge arena, as well as professional and administrative staff who support the transformation of the knowledge arena. Guests, family members, and friends of our graduates who are here to celebrate the graduations of their loved ones, our graduates and their families and friends in support tonight, members of the community, members of academic staff, members of student leadership from various student structures, support and administrative staff, friends of the University of South Africa, our alumni who represent the ambassadors of this august institutions, Distinguished members of the audience, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Quenand. Sanbonan. Riperil. Ah. Lochan. Tokozan. Sanbonan. Assalamu alaikum. Dumelang. Khotsong. It is now my singular honor to appreciate your presence at the University of South Africa, where we are celebrating the graduations of our loved ones. I wish to welcome you to this important university, a university at the center of building our society a university that is celebrating 150 years. Welcome. I'll not proceed if you don't clap for the only university in the country that is 150 years. <laughs> Colleagues, no university in this country is a grandmother of other university, only the University of South Africa. The second aspect that I thought would be important as I welcome you to this august university in the ZK Hall, in the ZK Matthews Hall within the Winnie Madikizela Mandela building. It is important to remind you that this is an asset 
not only of our country, but of the global arena. It was only in 1873, for the first time in the world, when the University of South Africa was set up to ensure that it allowed access to university through using distance education. The first university in the world to teach via distance is the University of South Africa. That too deserves a round of applause and a recognition of history. If you or your family know other universities, the 25 other universities in the country, whether you think about the University of Cape Town, University of the Free State, Fort Hay University, Rhodes University, and others. These were born out of UNISA, and thus are the children of UNISA as the grandmother of the university system in South Africa. In the region, UNISA has been a partner in the setting up of universities within the SADC region, some of whom used UNISA as an examination center. And therefore, the role of UNISA in our society requires to being held high to ensuring that we do not miss out on the important imperative of ensuring that UNISA becomes a leader even in the future with the changes that are taking place. 150 years later, in the aftermath of COVID-19, almost every sector in the world is mediating distance either through technology, whether institutions of higher learning, whether businesses, many of you now collect your shopping through some of those companies that mediate distance through technology. This is an invention that we should be proud of, that the University of South Africa, way before people would have thought about this, way before the challenges of the pandemic that we have dealt with COVID-19, had already thought around how to ensuring that people access education through the post office as a mediating system. And thus, we are proud that 150 years later, colleagues are catching up in the varied industries on something that UNISA has been a pathfinder to. The other aspects that I wish to share with you as I welcome you to this important university is that in the university sector, UNISA is responsible for 33 to 37% of the students who are enrolled into universities in the country. In the university system, colleagues, UNISA is responsible for 33 to 37% of the students who are in university. I think it requires. <laughs> Let me tell you what that means. The smallest university in South Africa enrolls at least 3,000 to 5,000 students. These are Seoul Plaki and University of Mpumalang. They are new universities. The mid-sized university in South Africa takes 36,000 students. That could be the University of Witwatersrand or the University of, um, of, 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 of Free State. That's a mid-sized university. The, the, the single large university that takes at least 60,000 students to 70,000 is our neighbor, Twani University of Technology. If you take those sizes and compare them with a university that takes 400,000 students, you'll understand why UNISA is an asset for society and it must at all times its management, its council, its senate, its statutory committees must work hard to ensuring that it is a site of excellence and success. It is precisely because we are the largest university in the country and in the continent that makes sure that higher education or university education is accessible 
that we invest in doing our best for our university to succeed in. That two colleagues deserves a round of applause. I wish to also inform you that it is not just in the numbers that we have or that we are responsible for, that we as the university are proud of the work that we do. I want to reaffirm to you that the university is making st great strides in a number of areas that we need to share with you. First, not only do we register the largest numbers of students, but we also register at least 175,579 students who are supported by national financial aid system in our country, financial aid scheme in our country. That colleagues states that UNISA is a partner with our, with our government and society to making sure that students and our society, youth and young adults, extricate themselves from poverty. Because when students are supported by NEFSAS, it is an indication that their economic being in our society is on the margins, and thus it's important that education becomes an important resource that they optimize for themselves. I think those of you who may have been supported by NEFSAS, I would like you to be proud of the work that you're doing because you may be the first generation students, the first in your families to graduating in university, and I'd like to congratulate you. Can you congratulate them? <laughs> then colleagues, a few things that I think are important for you to know. In 2020 and 2021, UNISA was ranked number 13 to number 16 in the varied rankings in our global arena, knowledge arena. Whether you think about Clarivate, or you think about Times Higher Education, or the Web of Metrics, or any other ranking, QS rankings, or any other rankings, UNISA was always within 12 to 13, or 12 to 16. I'm very proud that in 2024, we are proud of the improvements that our academy and the university community has made. First, in most of these rankings, we are now number seven and eight from number 12, 13, or 16, depending on the ranking. That, equally, colleagues, is a testament of the commitment of our academy, but also of the university. I was saying I, I, I would not know who moves from number 12 to number 7, and we don't recognize that gap. So I'm very happy that you have recognized the improvements. But two, it's very important for us to tell you, in terms of the Times Higher Education subject rankings, UNISA is ranked number one in the College of Science, Engineering, and Technology, alongside with Stellenbosch University and North Uni Northwest University in Engineering Sciences. Being top is very exciting, but a lot of work. <laughs> the same is true to the fact that the College of Education produces over 50% of the teachers in the country in private and public sector uh, schools, and therefore, this is quite an important area because teaching is the bedrock of any educational system. The second, uh, the other part that I'd like to alert you is that 30% of chartered accountants are produced by the College of Accounting Sciences in our university, and you know how difficult it is to get these chartered accountants in our country, but anywhere in the world. I would like you to encourage them to do even more. Congratulations to them, too. <laughs> Equally, colleagues, the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences does very well, produces the numbers, high numbers of agriculturalists and scientists who are interested in genetics and associated degrees in our university, it produces the largest number. But what is even more profound, 
the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences has been asked by our continent to be at the center of the sequencing of the genes of biotic materials in our country, meaning the, the flowers, the trees, the fauna of the country, they are response and the continent, they are responsible for mapping them for the benefit of our continent so that they are not taken freely by others or abused freely by others without the benefit of the continent and the countries or scientists that are responsible. I think they deserve a round of applause. The College of Economic and Management Sciences, the TM School of International Relations, and other colleges are quite at the center of ensuring that financing for development, the questions of the training of statisticians to help our society, the reimagination of the developmental issues in the place of South Africa in the world become rallying forces for improving international relations. And they two colleagues uh, require your encouragement so that when they teach, they know we appreciate their work. Can you give them also a round of applause? Thank you. I'm very proud, colleagues, therefore, that in 2021 and 2020, as I said, the professorate at UNISA with PhD were 39%. As I speak to you, they are over 62% because of the investments that are made. We are aspiring to being, at least in three years, to being over 85%. 62% is quite strong in the higher education system. I think this is an indelible improvement that we require to recognize. In. <laughs> At least if your parents don't understand, you understand. You understand what it means when your professor is one of the best in the world, and they are recognized for that. So don't keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> affirm where you need to affirm. Huh? Yes, yes. So, so I can understand our loved ones, but I cannot understand you if you keep quiet. Finally, colleagues, I want to state that the University of South Africa, sometimes you may read some reports in the media Please let us work on what is honest, what is true, what is accounted for. And therefore, it's very important for me as the principal and vice chancellor to request you to be our friend, to read our reports audited from the Council of Higher Education and others so that you know the truth about these improvements that UNISA is making, not the conjecture and gossip mongering that many of you are exposed to through paparazzis and associated matters. So I invite you, as the friends of the university or the students, to pay attention to the substantive issues that are reported about the university. Because if we pretend that there's no negative reporting about UNISA, we would not be honest leaders. So it's very important when we share these statistics with you, you have the right and responsibility. You also have Mr. Miss or uh, Menier or teacher Google you can also verify whether these are facts or we are not telling you the facts. It's very important that we do so. Finally, colleagues, beyond the improvements in the rankings, beyond the improvements in the quality of students that we produce who are doing their doctorates or who have done their doctorates and other degrees, beyond the numbers of students that we are producing, I wish to inform you that this is the university that has produced three democratic presidents. President Nelson Mandela is a graduate of UNISA. What it means is if you are graduating today and your aspirations are below that of being a president, then we would not have done our work as well as we would want. So I'm hoping that we will have some of you aspiring to be presidents. The same is true to His Excellency President Tabum Beki, the chancellor of this university, is a product of UNISA. If you thought we were done, President 
Ramaphosa, Cyril Ramaphosa, the sitting president of the country, is also a product of UNISA. But I don't want just to tell you about the statesmen colleagues. I also want to tell you, because we are diverse, we understand that knowledge must not be monolithic. It must create contestations. It must create multiple views and multiple ideas about the world. We also produce opposition political party leaders. Eh? Have you heard that? Anyway, huh? so if you think about the minister who agitated for us as a country to investing in the automotive industry, to ensuring that universities were the first to innovate an EV and EVA car, that was one of the first in the, in, the, in, the, in the conceptual framing of EV cars in the past. The car called Joule. If, if you have forgotten about it, you'll remember that the, the only opposition party leader who was part of the cabinet at the point, His Excellency Musibudi Mangena, the opposition political party leader of Azapo, was also a product of UNISA. But not only him, in the current system, the CIC of the Economic Freedom Fighters is a graduate of UNISA. <laughs> the same is true, the Democratic Alliance Party, the previous leader of the political party, Musi Maimani, was also a product of UNISA. So it's not just the African National Congress, it's DA, it's, even if you were to go with these smaller ones, you might find that one or two of their leaders uh, are products of UNISA. Why is it important that we speak about them? It, because democracies, to be strong, to be vibrant, to be viable, to be attentive to the socio-economic impact that they should make, we must ensure that robust participation by different leadership stream is encouraged. And therefore, as UNISA, we are very proud of these diversities of leaders that university has produced. I have been asking colleagues, uh, it, it seems that you're only using a, a fintech, a finance in your, in your credit cards, debit cards, or even on your phones. But I wanted you to show me your rent, whether 20 rands or 10 rands, I was going to tell you that the former governor of the Reserve Bank of South Africa and many other governors, whether you think of uh, Eswatini and others, you, you, you'd realize that there are graduates of UNISA, Jill Marcus, the former governor of the Reserve Bank, is a graduate of UNISA. Equally, colleagues, when you look into your rand, if you were to go into your pocket, if you have 20 rands or 100 rands, please look. The person who has signed it, Lisecha Khanyako, the current governor of the Reserve Bank, is a graduate of UNISA. <laughs> Finally, in the last seven years, at least 10 vice chancellors that have been appointed in the various universities in our country, but also outside our country, in Zambia and elsewhere. They are graduates of the University of South Africa. <laughs> that too, colleagues, means the degree that you're going to earn from this university is a quality degree. It requires you to treating it with respect and dignity because it, it is a testament of the hard work that you would have engendered yourself. But you're following on the footsteps of iconic leaders who took seriously the gift that the education they access through UNISA enabled them to do. And as I have given the testament, it is not only in the political arena that we have produced amongst the best in the world, but it is also in the various sectors. You too, as the graduates of UNISA, we expect you
To know that the sky is no longer the limit, is a frontier of research, is a horizon for your aspirations, and is a place that you should, as a graduate of UNISA, constantly aspire to pursue. For you are intellectually gifted, and your certificate will bear testament to that. Welcome to UNISA. Welcome to this graduation. We wish you all the best. Welcome to the loved ones. Welcome to the University of Leaders, the University of the Land, the University at the Center of Shaping Futures, and with you. Welcome. Before we start the conferment of the honorary degree, let me make one or two announcements. We would like you colleagues to take videos, to communicate, but to put your volume down. The second request that I'd like to make to you is that as you're taking your videos, please switch off your torches. They project on many of the people here. You can see many of them have to wear specs because they are almost unable to see. With your light, it makes it even hard for them to, to doing the work that they are supposed to do. So we would like to request you to do so. Then, this is particularly for the teachers. We want you to know that you cannot leave before the end of the graduation. The same dignity that you will receive and honor and ululations and appreciation of your graduations. We would like to have it for others who are graduating. There's a tendency for teachers, after you receive your certificate, you want up and down and go. It's not going to happen tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like you to enjoy the graduations. We would like you to ululate for your loved ones, to applaud them. But as you do so, to be sensitive to others so that they can hear their names being called, so that their families can appreciate them. So this is the announcement that I wanted to share with you so that we can enjoy the beauty of this evening. At this point, let me now proceed to confer the honorary degree, I now request the Executive Dean of the College, Dr. M.T. Masichaba, to introduce the candidate to me. Madam Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to introduce to you Pete Warren for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Honoris Causa. Born in 1947 in Cravelot, Limpopo, Mr. Pete Warren affectionately known as Makoma in the Mopani district, is a figure of immense stature in the agricultural sector. His profound impact on the local community, his innovative practices in cattle farming, and his contributions to sustainable agriculture have set him apart as a leader and a visionary, not only in the field of agriculture, but also business management, supply chain, and entrepreneurship. As a renowned red meat producer, Warren's operations have evolved significantly over the years, extending beyond primary beef production to encompass a comprehensive fresh meat value channel. This includes two feedlots and an abattoir operation in Palabura and Guiani culminating in two wholesale meat distribution channels, 14 retail butcheries, a feed production plant, and a wholesale bakery. This expansion not only exemplifies his business acumen, 
but also his commitment to creating a self-sustaining agricultural ecosystem in the country. His dedication to the breeding of rare game species, particularly the sable antelope, is noteworthy. Warren's intensive breeding program is not just a personal achievement, but also a significant contribution to the preservation and enhancement of biodiversity. His success in this area, recognized by prestigious awards from organizations such as AgriLidaba and Wildlife Ranch in South Africa, underscores his expertise and dedication to the field. Warren's deep-rooted connection with the Mopani district, underpinned by his fluency in Ishitonga and his understanding of local cultures, has enabled him to make a tangible difference in the lives of local farmers. His efforts to integrate indigenous knowledge with modern agricultural practices have been pivotal in advancing sustainable goal number two and the African Union Agenda 2063. His work in cattle farming is not just about beef production, but also about fostering a sense of ownership and pride among staff and the local community. Through shared distribution and the creation of an employment trust, Warren has empowered not only the employees, but also local farmers, aligning their successes with those of his operations. This approach has not only motivated his team to achieve extraordinary results, but has also fostered a sense of community and a shared purpose. Moreover, Warren's mentorship of local communal property associations and his contributions to the improving their livestock's genetic quality and management practices have had a had lasting impact on communities' agricultural prosperity. His work with the Bahagaba Maake and the Balebje communal property associations exemplifies his commitment to uplifting local farmers and enhancing their capabilities to compete in commercial markets. In addition to his agricultural achievements, Warren's community involvement extends to supporting local sport and development initiatives. His efforts inspire future leaders and advance the socioeconomic welfare aligned with broader objectives of fostering sustainable, inclusive growth in the region. At its sitting of 15 September 2023, the University of South Africa's Council favorably considered these illustrious accomplishments and unanimously agreed to confer the di distinct honor of the Doctor of Philosophy honoris causa in recognition of his profound impact on agricultural sustainability, community empowerment, and economic development, and also inspiring future generations to pursue sustainable development and inclusive growth. Madam Vice-Chancellor, I now have the honor to request you to confer on Pete Warren the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Honoris Causa. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Honoris Causa on Pete Warren.
Certificate. Certificate. Thank you very much. You may be released. I think you are doing that. So when he walked here, he, he was missed, huh? And when he goes, what do we say? Congratulations. Can you give him Mekholo Kwane Mudidi Akane? So you guys must work hard. You know what it means? It means somebody somewhere will recognize the great work that you do for society. At this point, colleagues, let me request our new doctor, His Eminent Mr. Uh, Mr. Dr. P. Warren, to deliver his acceptance speech. Ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, and the University of South Africa. This is nearly too much for a man of my age to, to be able to go through all this, but I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I stand before you today proudly humbled and, to, and deeply honored to accept this prestigious honorary doctorate. Words cannot adequately express the depth and the gratitude I feel towards the University of South Africa, its faculty and the individuals who have deemed me worthy of such a remarkable recognition. I am truly grateful for this acknowledgement, for my contribution to fostering entrepreneurship in agriculture, the co a cause that lies close to my heart, the link between entrepreneurship, hard work, and development economics is undeniable. Professor Supporter, the fact that you and your faculty have identified this link through this honorary doctorate is indicative of your foresight. I commend and thank you. At the same time, I trust that this honorary doctorate will inspire our leaders to create conditions that will foster many future success stories similar to mine. Nikombela Kukensa 
वाले काया अज्ञा लोको निसुगुला आइचोने गोफ बामीना अतरम गोदीने मनवामीना अरे तिजार लोको नुको मल्लेम्बया मति मुहिते तमुने मनवामे इसुके लक्काया आया तिजा सागु मजुगा मकाला से Mina nikulelen shanen wa sarma kuwel. Se. Se lesu minga mistibaku rimulera me ero raga makuwel, raga ngkul. Se. Ani nga tafika la loko kunga re wano wale gyanin. Ewa ba nga ni yimelela na nyamutla wa an kaimetela. Na nyamutla wa an temendela wa ku ayyen amashwene. Sa kata ku hanya imo ya walo. Receiving this honor, Doctor, is not just a personal achievement, but a testament to the collective efforts of those who supported and inspired me along this extraordinary journey. I am indebted to my family for their unwavering love and encouragement, to my mentors, and to the guidance and wisdom, and to my colleagues and collaborators for their invaluable collaboration and camaraderie. I am from humble beginnings and was born in Gravelot, Limpopo, to parents who worked and a mother who teached. At the age of 18, and after finishing high school, I chose to go a different direction and commenced my journey into cattle farming. By borrowing money, leasing land, and f I farmed cattle throughout my whole career, and I have been self-sufficient, and I have never been employed or taken a monthly salary, which makes this award even more humbling to receive without... <laughs> without formal tertiary education. When I started farming, the veterinary restrictions to the west and south of the Kruger National Park resulted in the foot and mouth restrictions, which caused that farmers could not get access to local markets, but had to take what came their way. So only full-grown animals were sellable. No young cattle had any value. So this was financially limiting and burdensome. This was the catalyst that led me to start a butchery, a feedlot, an abattoir in Giani and in Palabora districts as an avenue for me and other farmers to sell our cattle. Gaza beef was purchased from the government in 1982. It was managed as a quarantine feedlot in the foot and mouth affected area. This presence of Gaza beef feedlot and abattoir in this controlled area changed everything and meant that young cattle could now be marketed by local farmers. The annual wealth created for small and emerging farmers was unimaginable between 50 and 70 million per year. 
and led to sustainable, profitable farming in the Guiana area. The feedlot and abattoir also created many jobs and has continued to employ community members for over decades. We as Gaza Beef have contributed to the local communities through sponsorship, sporting teams, and donations to local schools. As the cattle industry continued to grow in the north of Limpopo, so did the new industry start to emerge, game farming. Game was privatized by the government and created a new demand for hunting of wild game. I understood that any type of farming needs to be sustainable to ensure the protection of a species, make farming a profitable enterprise. This in turn created an opportunity to, for me to start breeding wild game. I quickly realized that sable antelope were scarce on the hunting scene and the average horn length of only 37 inches at the time made them less desirable to the trophy hunters. So I set a course to improve the length of the sable horn by using my knowledge and experience gained in cattle farming, by selecting better genetics and by line and inbreeding the sables we were able to increase the average length of the horns from, 40, uh, from, 40, from, 40, from 38 to 47 inches and beyond in a 30-year period. This effort created a lot of interest within game farming and led to the rise in sable breeding, ultimately increasing sable antelope throughout South Africa as well as dramatically increasing the value of the sables. Furthermore, in the present game industry, the most underestimated animal in the world is the rhinoceros, which is presently, and I want to say this slowly, eight times more valuable dead than alive. This has led to 10,206 rhinos being poached over the past 15 years, which means that there are less than 2,000 rhinos in the Kruger National Park of the original 10,500. There are more than a billion Asian and Chinese people who use rhino, rhino horn for medicinal purposes, creating an unbelievable and unattainable demand. If legalized, rhinos will become the most profitable domestic animal on a farm ever. In closing, I would like to express my deepest gratitude once again to the university community for this incredible honor. The significance of this honorary doctorate exceeds far beyond personal achievement. It serves as a powerful reminder of the critical role entrepreneurship plays in driving sustainable development, particularly in the domain of agriculture. Rather, the role that entrepreneurship can play in the upliftment of especially rural communities cannot be underestimated. I am a living proof thereof. I hope that this honorary doctor will serve as a lasting reminder to those in authority who are responsible to create the right framework for entrepreneurship to flourish and to serve as development incentive. As we confront the complex challenges of the future in food security, climate change, and rural development, entrepreneurship emerges as the catalyst for positive change unlocking new pathways to prosperity and resilience. And finally, hard work, dedication, honesty are three of the cornerstones you need to achieve success. Thank you and good night.
once more, congratulations to Dr. Warren. In his message, he reminds us that it's important to have initiative agency and not to allow your contradictions and challenges to limit your opportunities. He says, although he did not have formal education, he was inspired to ensuring that he was at the center of ensuring that cattle development as a business, but also as that which enabled communities and societies to cohere became an important impetus for him. He also says, which I like, in our language, in the cancer. He also says, I, I did not just grow because of myself or my family. There were surrounding communities that supported my work that I learned from and learned with. They learned also from me, and we learned together and we expanded our businesses. He also says crisis is a good moment to being innovative. The food and mouth disease helped him to rethink how to transform his business. So challenges must never be what locks us from seeking opportunities, but they must, as he says, and as his life is a testament, inspire us to look for better solutions. Congratulations once again. The University of South Africa is truly proud to have you as one of, of its alumnus through your rigorous work, your resiliency, and your entrepreneurship. Thank you. Congratulations. By virtues of the powers entrusted to me, I shall now proceed to confer the degrees and diplomas of the University of South Africa on the candidates whose names appear in the program. I request the representatives of the colleges to present the candidates to me. Madam Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to introduce to you Remo Ruba for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. I request his supervisor, Professor G. Ichiluan Etsoka, to read the citation in support of the conferment of the degree. Madam Vice-Chancellor, allow me to say a word on behalf of Pete Warren. I will be not be relevant if I would not recognize his contribution in entrepreneurship. And here I am, I am standing to, 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 to read a validation of a student from DRC in entrepreneurship. Although his name does not appear on our program today, his visa was delayed on Friday and only issued on that very day while he was on the process. And to today, May I read his validation? In his thesis entitled Entrepreneurial Orientation and Performance of and hear the validation of our doctoral graduate. Can we quickly? Just quick, quick. Just a minute.
Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you. In his thesis entitled Entrepreneurial Orientation and Performance of Manufacturing Companies in the Northeast of Democratic Republic of Congo, he examines the influence of entrepreneurial orientation on company performance under the moderating effects of business environment using a mixed method approach. The findings show that each dimension of entrepreneurial orientation influences performance based on business environment characteristics. Under instability, only aggressive companies are successful and manifest and manifestant environments are the most conducive for innovation and employees autonomy. The study develops a model framework and recommends cutting red tape, a one-stop shop for tax collection, reducing the tax burden, and improving security. This work was made possible, not myself only, but was co-supervised with Dr. T. van der Vestesen from UKZN. Thank you. Madam Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to request you to confer on Remo Ruba the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy on Remo Ruba. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor, Terence Nebuchadnezzar Machangara receives the degree of Master of Education. Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates received the degree of Master of Arts. <laughs> Remembrance Charity Brown. <laughs> Asanda Notala. Madam, Madam Vice Chancellor, Lillian Labani Magenda receives the degree of Master of Information Science. <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates receive the degree of Bachelor of Arts honors. Amanda Lee Hain receives the degree with distinction. <laughs> Sibabato Mokwena.
Madam Vice Chancellor, uh, let me introduce to you Pentias Jack Nkuna, who's an advocate of Axuit. Madam Vice-Chancellor, the following candidates receive the degree of Bachelor of Commerce Honours. <laughs> Portia Ntombizodwa Madisha, the degree is obtained with distinction. Cholofelo Philadelphia Mohammed, the degree is obtained with distinction. <laughs> Andrina Manana. Raramani Naomi Manyage, degree obtained with distinction. Wongani <laughs> Elvis Maseko. Tina J. Ralph Masiwa. <laughs> Lunge Lua Samantha Msani, degree obtained with distinction. Ruzani Whitney Ramano. <laughs> Yevani Reddy. The nail sing. <laughs> Tandi we Lucia Tomo. Nkose Payo Melusuenko Sizwane Azita Misi Mashao, degree obtained with distinction. Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates receive the degree of Bachelor of Administration Honours. Zandi Le Petinia Matlangu. <laughs> Dike Lady Huna Dimuloto.
Mapegi Maria Mochoacho. Mapolo Joyce Sipeng. Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates received the degree of Bachelor of Education. Daniela Francis Pinks received the degree with distinction. <laughs> Mohat Jane Princess Bodira. Angelique Pace. <laughs> Chewe Teto Mokhajane. <laughs> Sorry. Angelique Pace, the degree obtained with distinction. Chewe Teto Mohajane. Ntabiling Chipana. Asavela Kochana, degree obtained with distinction. Moiponi Selina Zamini. <laughs> Zandre Fori. <laughs> Mamukiti Miriam Salele. Nile Sati Lirato Colin Sojing James Longwane Yan Siska Angela Hoff, degree obtained with distinction. <laughs> Refilio Rose Kema. <laughs> Pebezi Eshla Kwete, distinction obtained, a, a, a degree obtained with distinction. <laughs> Patrick Hopper <laughs> Anelisile Beauty Kanzi degree obtained with distinction Mamore and now we need Karajane Mabo Onika Komane yeah. 
Dipule Law Confidence Libya. Balibe Balibe Tsi Eldis Lififi. Androni Lolen. Nomkebo Nunta and Samabaso. Faith Renee Lue Mavitsela. Cindy Murungwa Mabiana. Vinolia Machweni Mabiana. Evisa Christabel Mabura. Toby Lelebohang Madisha. Siamo Madice. Lydia Tambisani Mahanjane. Sibusiso Emmanuel Masangu. Zandile Precious Masangu, degree obtained with distinction. Dineo Maila. My boni my precious major. Dimpo Enika Makabu Tane. Boitumelo Edith Makale. Precious Mamukwena Makate. Emanti Makubela. Tracy Butomi Maluleke. Precious Zama Mapalala. Tiselani Lucia Maringa. Muki Edith Masemola, degree obtained with distinction. Swarello Masete. Bushe Mashabela, degree obtained with distinction. Joyce Kanyisile Mashale. Mamunyako Triposa Mashapa. Bettina Masimula. Makwe Nafinias Matakane. Angel Matevane.
Mpo Constance Matsipane. Tandi Mbegembe. Nontanta Ellen Mbonani. Faith Mkulega Mboweni. <laughs> Mamiki Betty Mitswamere, degree obtained with distinction. <laughs> Nomfundo Precious Mkalipi. Lirato Poshia Mguni. Ntabiseng Maria Mnisi. Thelma Modiva. Chubati Chubati Willy Modupa Ntabiseng Mohova Muyelo Muhapi Patricia Mohau Mosala Ntutuzi Mukhalaka degree obtained with distinction Ufenzi Makhakana Louisa Mukonyama Lufuno Sharon Mukope, degree obtained with distinction. Khashisho Mildred Mukwena. Mamodise Torin Molise, degree obtained with distinction. Tumelo Mulubela Shengiwe Faith Moloi Mushibudi Nathali Muloto. Masihu, Masihu Meloni Munaledi, degree obtained with distinction. <laughs> Eva Malikashane Monama, degree obtained with distinction. Sepang Sylvia Monyazi, degree obtained with distinction. <laughs> Itumeleng Victoria Mose. <laughs> Christina Nomsa Mutaung, degree obtained with distinction. Given Nomakovane Mutaum (laughs) 
Lirato Johanna Mutsavi. Murendeni Bridget Mfuni. Sanki Habai Piwe Mpila. Sinentanta Natasha Mswane. Londega Confidence Mtanti. Mbali Tedis Mtomboti. Kenneth Muaba. Lisiho Mutle. Ntabiseng Lydia Mutle. Chili Losandra Muchai. Pegan Naidu degree obtained with distinction. Kanyi Sanjovu. Sinovu Yotletnes Ndumaza. Pumelele Queen Ngobe. Sibongile Londi Wengubane. Tobe Ganjenene. Tabsile Tende Gankosi. Nelisiwe Sarankosi. Numpumele lo pris kankosi. Tembelise Grady Ntuli. Masesi Confidence Nziane. Kamohelo Pasane Chabulile Christina Piliso, degree obtained with distinction. Katleho Chamein Poku. Alisa Fortunate Khateb. Khateb. Okay. Promise Maria Rakhalakane. Sikofatro Caroline Ramadi. Aida Ramarumo. Kulufelo Johanna Rankwe, degree obtained with distinction. Lirato Sarasibupa. Amanda Masichaba Sikome.
Dokas Dikele Di Silo. Karabo Kele Silo. Pulula Senga. Ntebukheng, Philadelphia, Siretsi. Rehumuditwe, Rebecca, Sichokwe, degree obtained with distinction. Notando, Valencia, Shabangu. Fatima Bibi Shah, degree obtained with distinction. Sandra Shirimani. Lungile Sibego. Bonisiwe Peaceful Sitole. Lungelo Hopes Kosana. Siska Stienkamp, degree obtained with distinction. Nondumiso Loveness Tembe, degree obtained with distinction. Tumiso Valencia Tete, Tulisi Le Progress Chikalange. Mamolifi Princess Twala. Mpumelelo Caroline Villagas. Jax Felion. Jax. Close enough. Jax Felion. Similo Vunza. Chante Viese. Sipiwe Sweetness Klimba. Kulisiwe Lindogushe Zungu. Tabile Mashiku. Avuile Prince Figlen. Shonga Zipi Nsenyama. Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates receive the degree of Bachelor of Administration. Tume Longkozi. Unalen Naso Fima Sejo Pakis.
Lois Christine Vivius. <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates receive the degree of Bachelor of Commerce. Melka Melka Molobanya Nebushielo. Liberty Chirove. Clint Brandon Harrison. Lindy, you were peaceful, Slachwayo. Emmanuel Kajuru. <laughs> Malefiane Patricia Malebia. <laughs> Poshia Selwalenque Manamela. Kahiso Tevoho Monahota Wandi Lenobo Kibitsuana. Patricia Ngobeni. <laughs> Nomzamo Nondebenge. <laughs> Zanele Yulenda Shokane. Mosua Emens Asimpe Non Tutu Ko Tobe Kazwane Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates received the degree of Bachelor of Social Work. Ntabeling <laughs> Elizabeth Apani. Thank you. Thank you. Patricia Carabo Chiluani. Josephine Dikitani. Yeah. Is this theology? Yeah. You know, so yes. Nokutula Matkebu.
Okay. Now let's sound our Mokotu. Congratulations. Pelisa Happiness Rotu. Ntabisen Emily Shupani. Mokululeku Chairman. Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates received the degree of Bachelor of Theology. Nkululeku Shamain Clemency Lamini. Frederick Gawane Selo. Mulatu Vincent Chivasi. Madam Vice Chancellor, Mahodi Gertrude Safoku receives twenty nine. Yes. Madam Vice-Chancellor Mokoku Gertrude Sofoku receives the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Nursing Science. Thank you. Madam Vice-Chancellor, the following candidate received the degree of Bachelor of Art, Niu Masibuku. Atiyah Binte Aman. Carla Bush. Thank you. I'm very sorry. <laughs> this is really deserves special applause. Carla Bosch, she degree, receives the degree with distinction. <laughs> Solo Felang Mpo Chueni. Thank you. Patients and Flanzu Dibetsu. Non Flanzu Precious Glotlu. What do you think? What's your first name? Karen. Karen. Karen Jumat. Kurapetsi Yutan Austin Kakana. Lebu Khang Dora Madi Mabidi Kama.
Amukulani Dusli Mabunda. Thank you. Thank you. Micho Maparuma Mapotu. Maslu Bolu Christel Matlu. Thank you. Karabu Se Pati Muachi. Tinyana Koli Muslala. Daisy Madi Chaba Muleti. Of attending Mutsiva. Tracy Mungenya Mumsa Eti Nklaupu Now we will have it ready. Amy Stevenson degree obtained with distinction. The Kaledi Lia Chepi. Madam Vice-Chancellor, the diploma candidates will now be introduced to you. Madam Vice-Chancellor, the following candidates received the postgraduate diploma in the College of Economic and Management Sciences. <laughs> Sophia Muhadi Leriba. Katbamba Marareni. Tabiseng Polina Mufukeng. Chilizi Tangeni. Ndombeche Simelani. Other, other people, please. We can't just stop now. It's my request. <laughs> It's just quiet. Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates received the postgraduate diploma in the College of Education. <laughs> Patricia Bongai Baloyi. <laughs> Bunolo Pel Bireng. Olani Sidney Gumede, Diploma Obtained with Distinction. Yeah. 
Dinewo Kodisang. Margaret Mukwebo. Emily Senzegile Rampaku. Madam Vice Chancellor, Mpo Humongwe receives the diploma in the College of Human Sciences. Madam Vice Chancellor, the following candidates received a diploma in the College of Economic and Management Sciences. Glenda Baloi. <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor, Ronel Chantel Hebs received a diploma with distinction. <laughs> Pleja Menyani Gadani. Okay. Teresa Litabo Dikele Dikegana. Buntle Virginia Kwadi. <laughs> Didiro Violete Mahato. <laughs> Mahakani Pesi Mal oh. Peggy. Okay. Mahakani Peggy Malaga. Lisiro Ellen Malala. <laughs> Lirato Josefina Masuku. Lieni Masesi Matewula. Don't be footy pretty, Mikalipi. <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor, Letiwe Helen Mudipi received a diploma with distinction. Katleho Besi Muhulu. Yeah. 
Madam Vice Chancellor, Dumolu Moyo received a diploma with distinction. <laughs> Cynthia Dora Sesignana Mputi. <laughs> Manina Ndrovu. You can go. Butelo Obed Quantuani. Sara Gadiming. How hello, Adronika Ngosi. Lisiro Agnes Nobela. Happiness Guguletu Noholoza. Tobeka Nomtanda Zozama Sinatemba Politeness Pakati Puneho Nicolin Pala Kidiboni Dorothy Rakoma. Sinazo Toby. Masichaba Ntlomazani. Dr. Goodwill Villagazi. Can I request that we give them a round of applause? <laughs> At this point, colleagues, I'd like to invite the Vice Principal responsible for institutional advancement, Professor Solomon Mahanu, to congratulate our graduates this evening. Professor Mahanu. Madam Vice-Chancellor, many thanks for granting me the opportunity to express our congratulatory remarks in appreciation of the achievements attained by the graduates. 
they have done extremely well and they deserve to be lavished with all sorts of praises and commendations. It is now my singular honor, Vice Chancellor, to congratulate the graduates for the remarkable academic achievements as they received their certificates from the University of South Africa. In particular at this stage, I want to single out the recipient of the Doctor of Philosophy Honoris Causa, Dr. Pete Warren, and also the recipient of uh, the Doctor of Philosophy degree, uh, Dr. Remo Ruba from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Of course, those who attained their bachelor's degrees, their honors degrees, as well as the master's degrees, are also equally appreciated. I want to say to you that your academic achievement represents your tenacity and will, and the will rather to succeed. Similarly, the support you have received from your community represents your collective desire to succeed as a nation. Indeed, I want to implore you, because the journey you have traversed, you did not undertake it soli solitarily. In other words, as an individual. But there are people who surrounded you, who cajoled you, who encouraged you in your journey for you to reach this end. And it is my imploration to you that you should find it in your heart within the means possible to express your deep sense of gratitude in a somewhat meaningful way to them. In my mother tongue, there is a saying that goes, Munzama isabu sihu ke molebo It is in the sense of this saying that I want to encourage you that even if you were supported in the private scenes or quotas where people would not have seen how you were supported, please find it possible within the means that you have to express your gratitude and display it publicly to those who assisted you. Your alma mater, the University of South Africa, will conclude its 150th celebration at the end of June this year. Throughout the decades, UNISA has proven time and again that it is committed to the fundamental core mandate of teaching, learning, research, and engaged scholarship. We know that many of you are first generation graduates in your families and communities. Walking through the venerated stage of this ceremony, Professor Pulen Lengabula, the council of our university chaired by Dr. Dan Musia. We wish you well for your future endeavors. Go well and do good in the land. Be good ambassadors of the University of South Africa 
be good and brothers, uh, ambassadors rather of uh, the Republic of South Africa and also by extension be good ambassadors for the continent of Africa. Lastly, I was actually particularly requested to remind you that the gowns that you are wearing are not sleeping gowns. <laughs> they are academic gowns. So do not make a mistake and sleep with it. Congratulations, well done to you. I think you have to give Professor Mahanu a round of applause. <laughs> Especially reminding you that the world is not waiting for you, that your gowns are not for sleeping. They are a reminder for you to becoming an important citizen and a part of the circle of excellence, the alumnus and alumni of the University of South Africa. Congratulations. <laughs> but I also heard him saying, we should remind you that lifelong learning is an important imperative for you who are graduating from this University of South Africa. So let me ask those who graduated with their diploma to stand. Can you please stand? <laughs> Can you give them a round of applause? Thank you. You may be seated. Let me see those who are graduating with their degrees and honors and post-graduate uh, studies. Thank you. You may be seated. You saw the numbers, huh? Yeah. Oh, you can imagine what we are going to say. Let us see those uh, graduating with a master's degree. You can, you can look back. And colleagues, you may be seated. Professor Mahanu reminded us that uh, our doctoral graduate today is from the Democratic Republic of Congo, giving testament to the fact that when we say we are the African University in the service of humanity, we are not just limited here at home. Can you please stand up? Thank you. So, so when Professor Mahanu was saying we should uh, celebrate all of you, th there's something special I'm also going to do, uh, from diploma to PhD. It means tonight, if you're graduating with your diploma, if you thought you were done and you did not want any message from us, maybe you did not tell yourself the true facts. We would like you to register for your degree because it's important that you continue with the learning journey. So congratulations, second semester registration is still open. <laughs> <laughs> and colleagues on the degree, honors, postgraduate studies, did you see your numbers? <laughs> so if you thought, oh, I'm done, the mula is a uh, kaching ching is good. I'm not continuing to do my master's degree. No, just as the same as our colleagues in the degree program, we would like you to be part of the master's graduates. You saw there are only four, and you saw your numbers. That's disproportionate, and I'd like you to make it sure that we create an equilibrium. Huh? Thank you. And for you colleagues who are doing your masters, if you thought, oh, I'm a master now. <laughs> master, you know, 
It's a beautiful degree. Sorry, you're not yet done. Look next to you. You see that red gown? We would like you to continue because the red gown is a signifier of the topmost NQF level in terms of our qualifications framework. We would like you to join them. And can you, Dr. Ribo, can you please stand up? Can I please request you, Dr. Warren, to also stand up? Can you give them a round of applause? You may be seated. One is symptomatic of the pursuit of research that is quite innovative, and you're the only person who has written about what you were researching with the support of your supervisor. So we request you colleagues to really see the imperative of a PhD, not as pull her down or pull him down, but as that which anchors any development of any country and a continent. So remember that the National Development Plan, Agenda 2063 of the continent, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, all prioritize higher education as an important resource for changing our society. We invite you to journey with us in the pursuit of your studies. It's not only meaningful for yourself as individuals, but also for the continent and its contribution to the global arena. We've already invited you that an honorary degree is something that is conferred on outstanding individuals. The university just doesn't wake up and say, oh, Dr. Warren is going to receive this. Somebody makes a proposal. Others go and search whether it's true. Others even go to those environments to test whether there's somebody called Mr. Pete Warren who deserves to be called Dr. Pete Warren because of their work. And therefore, we encourage you, citizens of our country, of our continent and the world, to contribute to the best of, our, of your abilities and your purpose in life, because they are those who will recognize the impact you're doing to our society and to the global arena. Therefore, congratulations to you, sir, for being a stellar participant in changing our country and our world and in contributing to very important insights that help our society. My colleagues have asked me in five minutes to ask you critical questions. They know that your certificates, there's no doubt that you deserve them. You've worked hard, you've been resilient. Even if you took seven years to finish your degree, <laughs> <laughs> or in record time, huh? What's important is that you steered on up to the finish line, eh? and congratulations to you. <laughs> but they say in high school there's something called LO. You know about it? Yes. LO. But for universities, we don't call it LO. We said at the finish line, we ask you five critical questions that will help you to also re-improve where you might not have taken issue on some life important matters. So how many of you have passports? Not you, uh, our colleague, we know you had to fly to come here. <laughs> We're asking the, the locals. How many of you have passports? Okay, did you see the numbers, colleagues? Home Affairs is open tomorrow. <laughs> Please ensure that you apply for your passports. You know that cake that you were going to buy? Uh, I, I heard uh, one of the parents say, walk, smile, we're going to have cake tomorrow. <laughs> you can cut on it and get a passport. Let me ask, how many of you have been in all the provinces of our country, the nine provinces? Mm-mm, check, colleague. I'm looking away. Check. So they call, they, the, 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 the colleagues here, they tell me that that certificate 
For you to be a national leader and a global leader, you must understand South Africa, its provinces, its diversities, its contradictions, and the areas where you have to contribute, not just your local context, huh? You heard them. So you can bus it, you can taxi it, you can pull cars, you can take a train, but you must do everything in your power to know the country so that you can serve and be an active citizen. So we can cut the fermented beverages. If you are going to buy two or three bottles, you can do with nothing and tell us to bring our own so that you can travel around the country. Are we agreed? Yes. Thank you very much. They asked me how many countries outside South Africa in the region, Sadak region, would you have traveled? One or two? How many have traveled to one or two countries? No, if you come from Zimbabwe or Eswatini <laughs> or Lesotho, don't raise your hand. We know you have had to, <laughs> to travel. So I, I'd like here, ask the local, yes? Show me. So you see there are three or five, huh? That says, colleagues, you cannot be a regional leader that His Excellency President Mandela would have been, or President Ramaphosa, or even President Becky, our Chancellor. If you don't know what's happening in the continent and in the, con uh, in, in the region. So to go to Eswatini is about 500 kilometers the same distance as it is to go to Kimberley. Eh? Colleagues, did, um, here we are having our conversation. Don't look at your parents. <laughs> you have to make it yourselves. Eh? Eswatini, 500 kilometers. Lesotho, 500 kilometers. Botswana, just a little bit more, 600 kilometers. Mozambique, 750 kilometers. There's no way in three months or in 12 months after this graduation, you should not have been to at least two countries. We encourage you to do so. Thank you. How many of you, how many of you have been to another continent other than Africa? So you see there are so few. How do you compete with Latin America, with uh, Australia, with Asia, when you don't have the opportunity to go. So we encourage you, you can sell your shoes. I saw them as you were walking here. <laughs> they will buy us one ticket outside the continent so that we can have comparative studies huh? and be able to compare ourselves. When we share these points, it's not to, to, to talk about your deficits. It is really to propel you to claiming the assets that will make you a better citizen and a better contributor to your society. So thank you very much. I truly congratulate you. Can you please therefore, can I ask you, the loved ones, to stand up? I know you've been sitting for a while. It's good for your backs. <laughs> My colleagues here on the podium and those who are not attending wish to express to you our appreciation for being partners with the University of South Africa as you are also partners with our loved ones. You are the people who have given them hope. Sometimes when they did not have the books or they did not submit assignments or they were frustrated by the Invigilator app that they did not know how to use. <laughs> or even they wanted to give up in their studies. You were there to encourage them. You were there to pray for them. You were there to give them courage. Sometimes you bought laptops. Sometimes you bought books. Sometimes you were just there. Your presence just gave them hope. The university wishes to thank you and commend you for being a partner in ensuring that education is a resource that, tra that transforms society, and therefore we wish to thank you. Can you give your loved ones a round of applause?
Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. You may be seated. I know it's good for your backs. We only do it once in four years, in three years, in four years, uh, and for masters in seven or eight years, and then for doctoral degrees in almost 10 years. So I would love to have apologized for making you stand, but because you're doing it only, you'll do it again in many years. We, 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 we really appreciate you. Can you please stand and show your parents what you came here to get? Actually, you are not here to show your parents brown envelopes. <laughs> the evidence is in the certificate that you came to get. Let us show them those. You, you, can, you can ululate for yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. All of us came to witness you receiving your certificates. We are proud of your achievements. Thank you. Colleagues, we just have two, three minutes to we'll be done, so I request you to at least uh, give us time. Can I please request all of us to stand up? Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to rise for the singing of the national anthem, the words of which are to be found on page 25 of our program. May I request you to remain standing after the anthem to allow me to dissolve the congregation. Equally, may I request you to remain standing whilst the academic procession leaves the hall. Equally important, even more important, is the fact that the national anthem embodies and projects the aspirations, the dreams, the desire for South Africa, our country, to being a country where freedom, democracy, and our humanity are affirmed. And we therefore request you to sing the national anthem with the dignity, respect, and love that it deserves to be sung. Please sing as best as you're gifted, and we will be supported by our organist and pianist, whom I've also requested to ensure that the piano reverberates in our hearts. Thank you. I'm very proud. 
by virtues of the powers entrusted to me as the principal and vice chancellor, I dissolve this congregation of the University of South Africa. <laughs>